And you know what, even though I like the mock stick, I'm not sure if it's gonna get us a bite that's big enough. I'm gonna go with a uh, six inch Ocho because I feel like this big old hunk of soft plastic here might attract a bigger fish. It catches bigger fish because of its drawing power. Big old six inch Ocho and we'll test it out. Oh my gosh, no way, no way. Oh yes, it's a bigger one. Oh my gosh, I knew it, I knew it. Over the last decade, I've caught fish in every corner of North America, from California to Mexico, Florida to New York, and all the way up to Canada, documenting it all on video for you guys. Yes, I got it! But as a video creator and instructor, I have generally left out one of the most important and the largest demographics in the world of fishing, and that is the bank beater, the pond prowler, the shore master. Yeah! In this series, I'm making it my goal to fish more bodies of water than I ever have before, but this time from the bank. My name's Tyler, and this is 100 Ponds. Well, what's going on everybody, and welcome back to 100 Ponds. My goal on this series is to fish all across the country in many different ponds, teaching you guys everything I learned along the way. So if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. We've got an assortment of lures we're gonna throw at this pond today, and as you can see, it is gorgeous. Enough talking, let's get down to pond number 75. Now I'm excited to announce in today's episode, we have the Taylor, well actually my chest mount's not on. Taylor Cam is back everybody. So Mr. Taylor, the editor, videographer, he will be also fishing this pond, teaching you guys everything he learns. Are we going? We're going. See you Taylor. Good luck to you as well. And as I walk down the dock on this beautiful pond we're fishing today, the conditions we have, it is the post spawn here in Texas. I'm saying immediate post spawn. So could we see fish on a bed still? Absolutely. I just don't know what the water temperature is like on this pond. And so I'm gonna say for the sake of uh, an overall synopsis, there's probably no fish on beds. I do see a bunch of fry right here. So we have some, some previously spawned bass that are right here. Water is crystal clear. It looks like at least as far as the, uh, the dam is concerned, we have a steep drop off. Taylor's going to start way over there, not close to the dam. So we'll hear his breakdown here in a second, but I'm excited. I think we're going to catch some fish today. I've heard there's a lot of good ones in here and I'm going to start with a topwater walking bait. And because it's not too windy and because it's really clear water, I'm going to go pretty slow with this bait. I don't know what the temperament of the bass in this body of water is like. And so I'm not going to try to rattle their brains with a hard knocking, fast moving top water. And as a matter of fact, it, this is probably not the right top water for the situation, specifically being that it, it drops off pretty quick right here. But I want to catch one on top water and I didn't feel like re-rigging what I already had. So <laughs> we'll make a few casts with this thing. But with these conditions and this water clarity specifically, probably uh, a popping frog or just a hard plastic popper would be better than a walking bait. Am I saying you can't catch fish on a walking bait in clear water? Absolutely not, you can. That's kind of more like a summertime thing on deep points on a big reservoir. In ponds, a popper is absolutely juicy for uh, these kind of conditions. As a matter of fact, I'm just gonna go ahead and switch to that now. I was being lazy. Can't be lazy, everybody. Put this baby back in there and it looks like we have one of the new size extensions of the mock spray and shed. This is the 70 size. I think we had the 50 and now we have the 70. Now you might be wondering, Tyler, why are you throwing white or bone? Actually it has some pink on the bottom in a pond that has water clarity this clear. Well, I've just kind of found that bone works all the time. I don't know what these fish are eating. And to be honest on a popper, I, I don't really think it matters. So I don't think I have to throw a bluegill colored or a bait fish colored. I just like that this has a lot of contrast, helps the fish really key in on it. Although it's more than likely the fish today don't really need any help keying in because like I said, the water's pretty clear. And if I work down this whole bank here and don't catch one on top water, I'm just gonna put it away. The only reason why I'm giving this a shot is because it is the post spawn and it is overcast conditions. We have clouds and a little bit of wind. With these water conditions, I would usually never throw a top Top water it's just it's too clear these water conditions are really where soft plastics excel and that's probably how we're going to catch our fish today all righty so i'm starting off with a swim jig water's pretty clear and we've got some flooded grass over here and i just think it looks really good so we're gonna see what happens i'm gonna fish this swim jig on the bottom i think there we go 
on the bottom. Chunky one. There we go. On the swim jig. Pretty nice one. See you, buddy. And you know what? I'm seeing a, a small fish hang around a little spot on the ground, on the ground, in the water, uh, that I think might be a bed. So let's uh, check it out. There we go. Number two. This is a pretty good one right here. Oh, yeah. Dang. That is a nice one right there. Let's go. I think that I was looking at a bed way out there, and I think I was right. Cool. See ya. It looks like Taylor Cam got him one. Yeah! That's number two. Oh, he's, he's got two already. Oh my gosh. Man, what am I doing? I'm fishing on the bottom. Okay, he's got two off the bottom, he said. So, top water's not the move today. And that is exactly why bringing a friend with you can help you uh, discover patterns faster. So thank you, Taylor. But before we start hopping a jig off the bottom, I'm gonna flip with this bed fish, cause I, this, yeah, there's no way this guy is not on a bed. Oh, for sure. He just spun right around. Come on now, he's nosing on it. Gosh, he ripped my dang tail off. No, I got no tail on my swim bait. Ow, oh, okay, he's so small. I'm not wasting my time. If Taylor's catching him on a dang jig, that's what we're gonna do. Now real quick, before I head to a little corner of the pond, I'm actually gonna go ahead and switch my jig size. I think it's too heavy. Although I'm not sure if I even have a smaller one. Yeah, I don't think I do. Is it smaller? Yeah, it's smaller. Here we go. Got ourselves a little 3 8 ounce cage fighter. And I've gotta go pee. I think that was a bet out there. Oh, I just lost a big one. Dang, they're loaded on this point. That was a big one. Oh, dang. I need a stiffer rod, I think. Oh, he took my tail. Rig up a new trailer here. I think there's another bed up off that point. Oh, man. Well, I'm wet now. That was a bad idea. The problem I'm running into is I have to make such long casts to get out past this stuff that there's so much stretch in my line when I go to set the hook that I'm just not hooking them. <clears throat> and now my foot's wet. To me, it seems like they're set up on the point, on these, these points where the grass comes out. That seems to be the trend so far. I just can't fish it properly because it's so far away from me. There we go. There we go. On another point. Get in here. Little guy. Thank you, pal. I don't know how I'm gonna get you back to the water. Gotta give him a little, a little bit of a toss. There we go. Sweet. Oh, on the point again. Dang. Two in a row. Another little guy. See ya. I was swimming at that time. Yeah, another one? Gosh, my jig's getting too much grass. Yeah, every cast I'm getting grass. Now I know he's throwing a swim jig and I'm throwing just a casting jig. So that could be the problem. Swim jig gets through grass a lot easier, but I'm gonna go back to the dock and give him a call. Yes. How many you caught so far? Uh, five. Goodness, how are, are you swimming it or are you hopping it? No, I'm hopping on the bottom and then I change it up a little bit and swim it. Huh, okay. I think I, it- dude, I, I missed. Like, because I have to cast so far out, especially over there, just to get past all the stuff on the bank. Yeah. And I missed, like, one three times in a row. So. All righty. Well, I guess I should go to swim jig then, because my jig's kind of getting bogged down on the bottom. Yeah. What is this, a quarter ounce or three-eighths? I think yours is three-eighths. I'm just saying, yours is yeah. swim, mine's, mine is the cage. All right. Yeah. Okie doke. I may just get a worm, to be honest. Oh, yeah. That probably worked. All right. Uh, keep catching them. And I'll try. I'm gonna try. Okay, <laughs> All right, so bye. Good. Bye. Well, I'm glad we brought him along because he's he's teaching me stuff that I wouldn't have learned for a little while longer. And that's that this jig is probably not the not the deal. So I'm gonna get a worm on here because I feel like that's the easier way to get a bite, especially in these kind of conditions. So once again, get the evolution bag out, get the snippers. Come on now, boom, jig, bye bye. Even though he's catching them on the jig, I feel like a worm. Again, knowing where he's catching them, you know, off the edge, a worm is probably a smarter choice. So we need dang three-aught wide gap hook. 
It's the VMC red line. A little bullet weight, 16th ounce. And I want to go ahead and get the brand new mock stick. A little four and a half inch or four and three quarter inch stick bait. Thread that bad boy on there, Texas rig. And to be honest, my hook's probably a little big for this size worm, but it'll do. Perfect. A little finesse stick bait. That is going to catch me a bass. You hear? Just slow and steady drag. Ooh, there's one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ooh, feels like a nice one. Ha <laughs> ha Edge of the grass. what I tell you guys? What did I tell you guys? Get up in here. One of the best ways to catch a bass is on a Texas rig stick bait. And that gets the skunk, the monkey off my back. And you know what? Even though Taylor had caught one that wasn't a success till I caught one, got myself first bass of the day. Thank you, friend. All right, so going to really key in on on that depth zone right there which is about 20 feet off the bank probably six to six to ten feet of water and man this thing it's a skunk buster right here the texas ragged stick bait can't beat it now one thing i've noticed about stick baits especially the smaller ones is that they are great at getting bites they're not always great at catching big ones and so if i kind of get in the rhythm of catching small ones i may jump up to the six inch ocho because I feel like that might catch me a slightly larger bite. But it's also possible, like I've talked about in many clear water ponds before, that this style of pond just doesn't have many big ones. It has a whole bunch of small ones and a few giants. It's rare that I found a super clear body of water, lots of grass that's not managed, that has big, nasty fish. So for the most part, I expect us to catch kind of the same one to two pound fish. Hopefully though, we can snag one of these giants that I'm sure is in here just looking at this place. Man. Oh, wow, you guys see that? Oh, I'm gonna reel them in just like this. Yep, 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 yep. Boom, got him. Wow. Call me an athlete. That took skill right there. Yeah, look at that guy. Cool. See you, buddy. Call me an athlete. That was crazy. And if you watch close enough, you'll notice how I'm working this worm. It is just a slight lift up, let it sink. If I feel some grass, I'll kind of give it a little pop like that and then back down. I mean, it's, it is not a whole lot of action at all. If you are lifting it, you know, four feet off the bottom, letting it sink, can that trigger a bass? Probably, but I, I found that the more subtle you can be um, with your worms, the better. Oh, hey oh. Got the bedfish. <laughs> I guess he wouldn't eat a, a little swim bait, but first cast over there, he flung my worm on the other side of the dock. We got him. And like I said, he was not gonna be a big one, but he is a healthy fish and glad to have him. Roof of the mouth. And man, with this hook, whatever it is, the coating and the steel, the vanadium steel, you don't even need to set the hook that hard. You just kind of lean into him and you got him. But I lost my worm, dang it. I wasn't even casting at that fish. I was casting at some fish that I saw cruising. But obviously the fish uh, thought it was juicy enough to eat. And actually, I could hook him on this small of a bait. So that is two fish, one on a bed, which I, I count, but you know, not really. Unless I can find more that's not really patternable. And as much as I like having a rod bent, I kind of want to catch a big one. I know they're in here. I just don't know how many of them there are. I don't even know where Taylor went. Where is he? Oh, there he is. He's back in the reeds. Let's check out Taylor camp. I'm going to get eaten by a snake. Oh my gosh. Raspberries. Ooh. Don't mind if I do. Mmm, nice. Stand on this log. Seems a little dangerous, but we're gonna do it anyway. Man, I can't even... <laughs> oh! Yep, yep, we're just having an adventure today, ladies and gentlemen. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Welcome back to Tyler's Real Fishing in your latest episode of 100 Ponds, where we have an adventure. Uh-oh. Ooh, ooh, fish ate it on the fall. Is it bigger? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yeah, so let's get a thumbnail. Get up in here. All right. First, nicer fish, and that was out deeper. And again, didn't need a strong, I'm just going to grab by the pressure points. That's also a tip. You want an ice cream scoop cone, ice cream scoop. If you want to grab a bass like an ice cream cone, you grab them by the pressure points, which is right behind their, uh, their gill plate. It's a little pressure point area, and if you grab them like that, they're not going to get off. So it's an easy way to get a, a treble hooked fish unhooked, just to grab them by the pressure points and then get your pliers with the with the uh, with the other hand. But beautiful, awesome, uh, you know, fish pushing pushing two pounds, super cool. 
So that fish was a little bit deeper. So I'm gonna stop focusing my casts on the six foot zone and for sure go a little bit deeper in the, the 10 plus. Now I don't know how deep it is, let me turn the camera, in the middle of the pond. We have a huge middle area. It could get down to 20 feet, could kind of be 10, 15 all across. I doubt it gets super deep. I doubt it's like 30, 40 feet out there. But it's one of the things that unless you have sonar, kind of impossible to tell what's truly out there so maybe one day i'll launch a kayak in here but for now we're back to the bank now when you're fishing a worm there are two kinds of bites you can get the first i call the tick and the second i call mushy so the first one being as you're lifting up or as you're dropping it down again on bottom composition lures or bottom contact lures so your jigs your soft plastics that kind of thing so you're lifting up and you're dropping and you feel an actual tick through your rod blank or on your line, you watch your line jump. And that is a fish that's either sucked it in or sucked it in and spit it back out. And so then you go to feel, and if it's kind of heavy, you set the hook. The second one, which I feel like most of you guys have commented about recently is how do I know if it's, gr oh, there's one, there's one. Okay, right there. As I'm teaching it, as I'm teaching it, I got the second kind of bite, which is the mushy bite. Now this one was mushy combined with swimming. And so that's, that's kind of ideal, but you really have to do it by feel. There's no way that I can tell you over a YouTube video or, or a comment section or a DM like, well, this is actually what a bite feels like when it's mushy. You just kind of have to learn by muscle memory what the grass feels like that you're fishing on your body of water. That's kind of why I can't explain it to you guys over video because different grasses feel different. Wood feels different. Rocks feel different down there. And so having a good sensitive rod, this is the mock jacked combo. It's actually one of the nicer rods Lou's makes. And we put it in a combo for you guys, which is pretty cool. Um, but if you're lifting up and you feel something different than what you felt previously on different casts or different retrieves um, could be a fish and it's worth kind of lifting up even more and if you especially if you feel like a pull against you or it keeps being like loose maybe it seems like you can't actually catch up as you're retrieving that's probably a fish that has your soft plastic and is swimming towards you and then you have to really reel faster and just set the hook without even checking oftentimes that's a bass and so ideally the main butt you want to get is the, the thump or the tick that way you know a bass is probably there let me check and set the hook but the other way it just has to be muscle memory. I can't really teach you guys. You just have to learn what feels different. And that bite right there felt like grass. And as I turned my body, almost like I was lifting up to check, but I was turning it to talk to you guys, I felt the, the, the fish go the other way and I set the hook as he did that. So I wish that I could teach you guys on video, but it's something you have to learn for yourself. I'm gonna make a cast out there in the middle and start counting. One, two, as I watch my line, three, 11, I think it's still going, 12. Uh, I think it's on the bottom. And so a cast out there is really not a whole lot deeper than it is right here, probably about 10 to 12 feet out there in the middle. I'd like to some, sometime this summer cast a big, you know, deep diving crankbait or medium diving crankbait out there to see if I snag some grass or some mud on the bottom to see what the depth really is. Hard to tell on a, a soft plastic worm. Don't really have a whole lot of feel of what's down there. One more cast off the dock. Wonder if Taylor's catching any more. There we go. Oh, that's big. This one's big. Oh, really, really big. Dang. Oh, ah, there we go. Let's go. Nice one. Heck yeah. Three pounder, three and a quarter. Sweet. Oh, wait. There we go. See you, buddy. Off the point. Fished all those non points and I didn't get a bite. And we come back to the point, boom. Three and a quarter pounder. All right, let's keep moving. It is just so calm. Honestly, I'd like a little bit of wind. Maybe that's why Taylor was catching him better this whole video, because he's kind of on a windy, shallower sloping side, and I've got the deeper water. And it's possible the fish are not quite in the summertime patterns out in that deep water yet. Matter of fact, I shouldn't expect that. I mean, there's still a fish on a bed and the bluegills haven't really made their beds yet. So the fish are probably still in a, a shallow mindset. He just got the better, the better starting spot. Well, hopefully y'all are enjoying the content. If you are, hit that subscribe button. And I've got a merch brand down in the video description called Infinite Outdoors. I put a lot of time and thought into this brand. It has a cool meaning behind it. So if you're into that kind of thing, check it out. I have hats, I've got sun shirts. And I think by the time I put this video up, I will have a red hat, a red uh, a leather patch and a white leather patch. We've got flat bills, all kinds of stuff. Stickers, who doesn't like stickers? So if you wanna uh, support the brand, which I've got a fish, heck yeah. 
support the brand, it is uh, infiniteoutdoors.com. So I'll have it linked down below. See, the best thing to do to get a bite is to either get your phone out or just talk to the camera and let your worm sit down there for as long as possible. And that brings up another tip. Just be patient. When I see so many people fishing a worm and a jig or bottom contact lures so dang fast. And you know what? You don't need to do that. Take your time. Go, as I call it, pawpaw -paw style. Sit on your chair. Take a chill pill and let that worm soak down there on the bottom. And oftentimes that's when a fish bites it when it's been sitting there for a while. Maybe it has become accustomed to it. It hops. The fish is like, whoa, what's that? And it eats it. So if you're going ultra, ultra fast with your soft plastic worms, stop that. But don't stop checking out the merch. It'll be linked down below. And I'm pretty sure I see one on a, on a bed right here. How did I not see you earlier, buddy? Oh, is there a male and a female? Mm, looks like it, but they look like they're the same size. Can't quite tell where he wants the worm or doesn't want the worm on the bed. That's definitely a bedfish though that I'm pretty sure wasn't on the bed a few minutes ago when I got to this stretch, but now is. So I'm gonna get it over his face, pop it, and he ate it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Get in here. Get in here. Get in here. Get in here. Thank you so much, my friend. Beautiful little bass. Polarized sunglasses, folks. I don't know why you don't wear them in the springtime. If you got clear water, whether that fish there was a cruiser or on a bed, you can find those in your body of water. And I wouldn't have seen that. I mean, he was, he was camouflaged pretty good. Uh, the bed didn't even look like a bed. It's just kind of a, a brownish spot. And I wouldn't have seen that without polarized sunglasses. So y'all know by now, but I work with Amphibia. They make polarized sunglasses that are pretty dang awesome and they float. So I've got a discount code TRF20, saves you 20% on your sunglasses. And we're really trying to do some cool things with the brand this year. So if you could support and you need sunglasses, go ahead and check them out. Thank you. Oh, uh oh, bad cast. Oh no, I lost my worm. I have a bad habit of leaving my tackle bag in one place and not bringing it with me. And you know what? Even though I like the mock stick, I'm not sure if it's going to get us a bite that's big enough so it's possible it catches big fish but i'm gonna go with a, a six inch ocho because i feel like this big old hunk of soft plastic here might attract a bigger fish oftentimes bigger baits are not necessarily because the the forage is bigger it catches bigger fish because of its drawing power the fish can they can sense it they can feel it they can see it from farther away and unless you land right on top of a big fish, oftentimes they're not swimming a long distance to come eat your lure. So big old six inch Ocho and we'll test it out. First cast, little roll cast around the side of this tree here. Definitely sinks way faster. I guess I can be a little more efficient fishing this thing, but I'm still going to take it slow. Same hops off the bottom. It just, of course, takes a lot less time for that bait to, uh, to sink and to settle. Wow, did you see that? Holy cow, that was crazy. That was crazy. There we go. Number, I don't even know. Seven, maybe? Sweet. See you, buddy. That was a cool bite. Oh my gosh. No way. No way. Oh yes, it's a bigger one. Oh my gosh, I knew it. I knew it. And that right there, that was one that was like, I had, oh gosh. I had no idea if it was a bass or not. And so I kept pulling, kept pulling, and uh, it is. Let's go, yes. Not that much bigger, I'd say about half a pound bigger, but uh, he got that Ocho, that six inch. If it'll focus, there it is, down the gullet. Thank you, my friend. Let's see if he's, uh, he's almost throat hooked, but not bad. I can get my finger down there and kind of reverse the hook, poke it out, beautiful. Thank you, my friend. And he is bleeding a little bit, so we're gonna get that super healthy fish down back in the water heck yeah make a little adjustment catch a little nicer fish now could the mock stick have caught that fish possibly but i made a lot more uh, a lot longer of a cast and a lot more efficient of a cast but that was one that i did not feel the bite i pull up and i'm like is that grass it pull up again but the grass moved so i'm gonna set the hook and, and it was a bass you just gotta do it by feel there truly is no better way to become a better angler than spending more time on the water youtube videos instructionals my job it's all great and i hope to help you guys catch more fish on the water but you're probably not going to become a technically better angler by sitting on your couch there's one yes sir there we go come on now come on now baby yes deeper water Oh, that's the biggest one of the day. 
That's the biggest one of the day. Oh, I love that noise so much. Just the, the, the noise of, of line going across the water. Heck yeah, come on, come on, get your butt in here. Oh my gosh, that was so cool. That was gorgeous. Beautiful, yes sir, yes. <laughs> Absolutely nothing to complain about right here. Just specimen of a bass. Not super thick, but just gorgeous. Two and a half. You know, if it was if it was healthy, it'd be like three, three and a half pounder. But he got that worm down there. Let me tell you, these fish are eating it. I'm gonna have to pull the worm out here to uh, get this this hook out. Just a gorgeous bass right there. By casting on the deeper edge of the grass line with a bigger worm adjustments baby and that is one of the huge reasons why i love this sport because you can test something out scientific method you can see if it works and when it does man it feels good and then you can do it all over again i'll have the mock jacked combo i'm using down below it's just a seven foot medium heavy fast action i mean kind of standard jig worm lipless crankbait vibrating jig all that kind of stuff is great on this combo and i've got i think it's 15 pound cigar basics fluorocarbon a really cheap but also quality fluorocarbon that i have on all my pond combos and if y'all could shop for your tackle using the links in the video description they are affiliate links so when you click on it it uh it tracks your entire cart to my uh to my account and gives me credit for your purchase so that'd be super awesome if you already shop at tackle warehouse if you don't that's fine don't use the links but uh, tackle warehouse really is the best place to shop for tackle online so i would much appreciate it There we go. Another decent one. Oh, he's got black lips. Look at that. That's interesting. They call that lipstick. Man, they're biting the swim jig today. Cloudy, a little windy. Mm, just perfect. Oh, wow, dude. That was... Dude, I just lost that big one again. Dang! I can't, he's so far away, I just can't get a hook in it. It's probably on a bed. Yeah. How do you know it's big? As I can feel it. It like doesn't move. And then my hook just pulls out. Dang. You know what, I'm gonna go throw this six inch Ocho back at the dock area because I didn't make many super deep casts with this, uh, with this presentation, the worm. So let's head back there real quick. Maybe if I pull my phone out, check some texts. I'll get a bite. And last cast right there, a nice long bomb out there, kind of to the, the good depth zone. I'm gonna go no looker on this one. Just look to the camera as I drag and talk to you guys. And first of all, thank you for watching another episode of Hunter Ponds. I think I proved that this technique right here, the soft plastic stick bait, especially the smaller one, definitely gets you a whole lot more bites, but the bigger one can get you a little bit nicer sized fish. So like I said, all the tackle that I use is linked in the video description. Whoa, jump scare, closer. Now nah, that's cringy. Oops. Swimming it, baby. Let's go. This one's kind of got sores on them. Look at that. Huh. Thanks, man. Swimming the jig, baby. Let's go. Talking about that shake and bake. Without the shake, there's no bake. If you enjoyed this episode, I've got a whole playlist of Hunter Ponds. I think like 32 other episodes up here in the corner. I'll link the most recent one. There's lots to learn, lots to catch up on if you're new to the series. I am glad you're here. As always, it's a pleasure. Hopefully you enjoy the Taylor Cam. I think he caught more bass than I did today, so props to him. We'll see you guys next time right here on Hunter Ponds.